In 2019, Google announced their 53-qubit Sycamore processor had performed a calculation in 200 seconds that would take the world's fastest supercomputer 10,000 years. They called it quantum supremacy, published the results in Nature, and the world celebrated a technological milestone. But IBM immediately challenged the claim, arguing the same calculation could be done on classical computers in just 2.5 days. Then something strange happened. China's University of Science and Technology quietly built two machines that achieved similar results. But unlike Google's announcement, there were no press conferences, no headlines, no celebration. The breakthroughs were validated scientifically but barely publicized. Why the silence? Because once quantum computers consistently achieve real-world advantage, they could threaten every encryption system protecting global communications, financial transactions, and military secrets. If governments are staying unusually quiet about their quantum progress, that silence might be the loudest signal that something genuinely transformative is happening behind closed doors. Welcome to the emerging era of quantum computing, where the most important developments are the ones you're not hearing about. While tech companies showcase impressive hardware and throw around terms like qubits and superposition, the real story is far more complex, more uncertain, and potentially more consequential than the optimistic narratives suggest. So let's cut through the hype and examine what's actually happening in quantum computing right now, starting with the uncomfortable truth about where the real competition is taking place. When most people think about quantum computing, they imagine futuristic processors cooled to temperatures near absolute zero, suspended in elaborate cryogenic systems that look like something from science fiction. The hardware is genuinely impressive, but here's what companies aren't emphasizing. The real battlefield isn't in building better quantum processors, it's in developing the software to control them. Quantum computers don't operate like classical machines. They can't run normal programming languages or execute traditional algorithms. They require completely specialized frameworks to manipulate bizarre quantum phenomena like superposition, where particles exist in multiple states simultaneously and entanglement, where particles remain mysteriously connected across distances. That's why IBM created Qiskit, Google built Cirque, and Canada's Xanadu developed Penny Lane, which attempts to bridge quantum and classical computing systems. According to McKinsey's 2024 Quantum Technology Report, global investment in quantum software has tripled since 2020, surpassing $2.1 billion annually. Even Amazon and Microsoft now offer cloud-based quantum simulators, allowing developers to test algorithms without accessing actual quantum hardware. The fundamental challenge is writing code that remains stable, despite the constant noise and errors inherent in quantum systems. Something traditional programming approaches simply can't handle handle effectively. Whoever successfully develops the first truly scalable quantum operating system could end up controlling the foundational infrastructure of this entire new computing paradigm. The hardware might generate headlines, but the real war for quantum dominance is happening quietly in software development labs where the public rarely looks. And that software race matters enormously because of what quantum computers could do to the security systems protecting virtually everything digital every message you send, from banking logins to private emails to corporate communications, relies on encryption based on mathematical problems that classical computers can't solve quickly enough to be practical threats. But quantum computers operate on fundamentally different principles that could shatter those assumptions. In 1994, mathematician Peter Shore proved mathematically that a sufficiently large quantum computer could break RSA encryption which forms the backbone of nearly all modern digital security infrastructure. This isn't speculation or theoretical possibility, it's proven mathematics. Once a stable, fault-tolerant quantum system with enough qubits is successfully built, it could decrypt information that's considered completely unbreakable with today's technology. Governments worldwide understand this threat clearly, which explains why the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology has been working on post-quantum cryptography standards since 2016, finally publishing finalized standards in 2024. Other nations are pursuing parallel efforts. But the most troubling aspect isn't just future security breaches. It's something cybersecurity experts call harvest now, decrypt later. Adversaries could be stealing encrypted data right now, storing it, and simply waiting for quantum computers powerful enough to decrypt it years or decades later. That's why cybersecurity professionals describe quantum computing as simultaneously a technological revolution and a global ticking time bomb. 
This security threat is one reason quantum computing has become intensely geopolitical. This isn't just a scientific milestone, it's a strategic competition with national security implications. The United States, China, and the European Union are engaged in a high-stakes race to dominate quantum technology, and the investments are staggering. China's Quantum Project 2030 is constructing a nationwide quantum communication network and has already launched the Mishis satellite to transmit encrypted quantum data between continents. The United States is advancing through the National Quantum Initiative involving NASA, the Department of Energy, and major research universities with billions in funding. Meanwhile, the European Union's Quantum Flagship Program, renewed in 2024, committed over 1 billion euros to quantum research and commercialization. Private companies like IBM, Google, and Intel are working alongside government agencies, but make no mistake, national security interests drive the majority of funding decisions. Whoever wins this technological race could control the next generation of encryption systems, artificial intelligence capabilities, and computational infrastructure. It's the 21st century equivalent of the space race, except this time the battlefield isn't visible in the night sky. It's the invisible quantum realm, where particles behave in ways that seem to violate our everyday understanding of reality. But while governments compete for quantum supremacy, the technology's actual near-term impact will be far more specific and less dramatic than science fiction suggests. You won't have a quantum laptop sitting on your desk anytime soon, but major industries are already experimenting with quantum applications behind the scenes in ways most consumers never see. Pfizer and IBM are collaborating to use quantum computers for simulating molecular interactions that could dramatically accelerate drug discovery timelines. Daimler is exploring new battery materials for electric vehicles, hoping quantum simulations can identify compounds that improve performance and lifespan. Volkswagen and Airbus are testing quantum algorithms to optimize complex logistics like delivery routes, air traffic management, and fuel efficiency across massive transportation networks. These are still early pilot programs, but they reveal how quantum computing will first transform industries rather than consumer products. According to Boston Consulting Group projections, quantum computing could add between $450 billion and $850 billion in annual economic value by 2040. That means the first genuine wave of quantum benefits will arrive quietly in medicine, energy, and logistics optimization, long before quantum devices appear in consumer electronics. But achieving those benefits requires solving quantum computing's most fundamental problem. These machines are extraordinarily fragile. Each qubit can lose its quantum state in literally a fraction of a millisecond due to even microscopic environmental disturbances like tiny vibrations, minimal heat fluctuations, or stray magnetic fields. To maintain stability, quantum computers must operate inside cryogenic systems at temperatures near absolute zero, significantly colder than deep space. IBM, Google, and various startups are working intensively on error correction, but the mathematics are brutally challenging. Current technology requires thousands of physical qubits to create just one fully stable logical qubit that can reliably perform calculations. In 2024, IBM's Heron chip reduced error rates by approximately 60%, which represents genuine progress. Yet comprehensive fault-tolerant error correction remains years away from practical implementation. Quantum decoherence, when quantum information gradually leaks out of the system and collapses back into classical states, remains the field's single biggest technical roadblock. Until that fundamental problem is solved, we're dealing with powerful but incredibly temperamental machines that can fail from disturbances as small as a single stray photon passing through the system. This fragility explains why simply having more qubits doesn't automatically mean having a better quantum computer. Companies love announcing record qubit counts as if raw numbers tell the whole story. But here's the uncomfortable truth. More isn't always better. A 2025 Nature Physics study demonstrated that qubit quality, specifically how long they maintain coherence and how effectively they connect with other qubits, matters far more than raw quantity. IBM's 433 qubit Condor chip set impressive records, but many of those qubits couldn't maintain coherence long enough for meaningful calculations. That's why serious researchers focus on something called quantum volume, a comprehensive metric measuring both quality and scalability simultaneously. It's not about having thousands of unstable qubits that constantly collapse. It's about having a smaller, more reliable network of qubits that can communicate effectively and maintain quantum states long enough to complete useful calculations. Google, Regetti, and Atom Computing are now exploring modular architectures that link smaller quantum processors together rather than building single monolithic chips. 
The competitive race ahead isn't for the physically largest chip, it's for the system that operates most reliably and maintains stability the longest under real working conditions. All of this technical reality explains why quantum computing currently finds itself in what market analysts call the trough of disillusionment. According to Gartner's 2024 hype cycle analysis, quantum technology has moved past the peak of inflated expectations and entered the phase where ambitious promises meet harsh technical reality. Startups that raised tens of millions in venture capital during 2021's quantum enthusiasm are now merging, downsizing, or quietly shutting down as investors realize how genuinely difficult it is to stabilize and scale quantum hardware. But that cyclical disappointment doesn't mean the technology is failing or the dream is fading. IBM, Google, and Quantinuum continue publishing peer-reviewed progress on error correction and system reliability. IBM's 2025 roadmap confidently predicts utility-scale quantum systems achieving practical advantage within just two years. Often, the most significant technological breakthroughs happen during these quiet periods after initial hype fades, when serious engineers solve unglamorous technical problems away from media attention. And those breakthroughs matter because quantum advantage, while technically achieved in narrow contexts, remains frustratingly limited. Google's famous 2019 Sycamore experiment did technically outperform classical computers, solving a random sampling problem in minutes that would require classical systems thousands of years. But that specific calculation had absolutely no real-world application beyond demonstrating quantum capability. Since then, IBM and Quantinuum have demonstrated smaller quantum advantages in chemistry simulations and optimization problems, useful achievements but still firmly in the research grade category. In early 2025, MIT Technology Review confirmed that no company has yet achieved consistent, practical quantum advantage outside carefully controlled laboratory environments. The most significant leap came when IBM simulated a lithium hydride molecule with accuracy classical methods genuinely couldn't match, but even that required hybrid computing support combining quantum and classical systems. Quantum advantage exists. It's real, but it remains fragile, expensive, and very far from affecting anyone's everyday life. Which brings us to perhaps the most important truth about quantum computing that often gets buried in the hype. Quantum computers will never replace classical computers entirely. One of the biggest misconceptions fueling quantum excitement is the idea that these machines will eventually make traditional computers obsolete. That's fundamentally wrong. The actual future of computing is hybrid systems, where quantum processors work alongside classical machines, each handling the tasks they're best suited for. Quantum computers excel at specific problem types involving massive optimization challenges or molecular simulation. Classical computing remains unbeatable for everyday processing, database management, and communication. IBM calls this emerging architecture quantum-centric supercomputing, combining quantum processors with artificial intelligence systems and high-performance classical computers under unified frameworks. Microsoft's Azure Quantum and Google Cloud's hybrid platforms already allow developers to run quantum and classical computational tasks in parallel, dynamically allocating workloads to whichever system handles them most efficiently. Scientists call these setups coprocessing, where both quantum and classical systems share computational burdens based on their respective strengths. The ultimate goal isn't competition between quantum and classical computing. It's cooperation, where quantum computers act like highly specialized teammates tackling genuinely impossible calculations, while classical systems handle everything else. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.